Hi, my name is Kyle Deering. I'm the Senior Sales Engineer here at Infusionsoft. Today what we're going to go through is what we call a sales pipeline, or how we can set up sales automation within your Infusionsoft application. I've got pulled up here on my screen six different tabs that'll be kind of our agenda for today. First, we're going to hit up our dashboard. Then we're going to take a look at how we can actually customize the sales stages, right? So as we see right here on ours, we have qualify and educate. Those all can be customized. I'll show you how we can do that. Then we're going to actually go build out our campaign or how within our campaign builder we can create automation. And then we're going to look at opportunities and how we can manage our opportunities correctly. Some people might not be too familiar with opportunities and opportunities within Infusionsoft really just come down to a contact or a project within that contact. Then we're going to take a look after we've kind of built out our campaign and our sales pipeline, how we use it. Right? What are our sales guys going to see? Either them being direct sales, either it be a project manager, or outside sales. And then once we see that, we're going to see how a manager would use it by looking at reports on our dashboard or reports that we can pull and send to ourselves. All right, number one here. As you see, we're here on our dashboard. This is where we're going to be able to see things as far as our sales pipeline stages and everything. But what I'd actually like to go run through first is setting up our sales pipeline stages. So as I said before, you're looking at qualify, educate, and validate. Inside this tab, I've pulled up our sales stages. So as you can see, we have qualify, educate, and just by pressing edit here, I can go and change these names. So if I want to say this is going to be called stage one, I can. I can also have within it the order. So if you see right here on the right-hand side, we have an order. This is just basically to make sure that you're in the right, correct order and making sure that your sales stages are in their appropriate place. You also have target number of days. This is more for your sales reps. This is when I put someone in qualify or if I put them in educate, I'll be able to know how long they should be remaining there, as well as probabilities. This is really cool for forecasting. So if you put inside of a sales stage like qualify a probability of 10, that means 10% chance of closing. So let's say that project was worth $1,000. If the probability is 10, it's only going to forecast 100 of those $1,000. So as you can see, we can kind of create these different stages, uh, whatever they may be, and then we can even put inside a checklist. Within each of these stages, I can create a checklist for my sales rep that we'll see when we jump over to opportunities that will be able to make sure that they know exactly what they need to do during each of those stages. And you can even require them to check off those boxes that we'll see here in a second. That way they can move to the next stage. Once we set up our sales stages, and once we've set up our stage names and everything like that, they will appear on the dashboard appropriately where they're supposed to be. Now, let's jump into the campaign builder and take a look at how we would actually create a sales pipeline. So here we are within the campaign builder. This is actually where we're gonna create a sales pipeline. We're actually gonna throw you through what a normal sales process would look like. Typically, I'm just gonna go through a little brief overview here so you see what the campaign builder can do. So number one, we're gonna start off with what we call goals. We're going to pull out a goal. Typically, in your situation, really, you're looking at someone going to your site and pull, filling out a form online that would be like, contact us, right? Someone goes to the site and fills out the form. This is just a little simple web form we can place on your website and then have it to where it's going to connect to what we call a sequence. So as soon as someone fills out that contact us, they're going to jump right into a sequence. Inside that sequence, typically what you're going to want to have happen is a email that goes out saying, thanks for filling out our form. Now it comes to the part where we're going to start assigning it to a sales rep to start be, to begin the sales process. Number one, usually you guys are going to have it to where it's going to assign it to an owner. That be whether you have a round robin, whether you assign every new lead from the website to uh, Jeremy and everyone from a trade show to uh, Ron, whatever it might be, we can assign it to that owner um, and then we're going to have it to where that owner is going to get a task. Right? So that way when Jeremy logs in, he's going to be able to see that he has to do something, right? call this prospect. The benefit of that is that now you can have it to where it's an automatic response. Me as a customer, as soon as I fill out that form online, I'm going to be the most engaged that I'll ever be. Right? I'm ready. I took the initiative to contact you. The quicker we can get a sales rep to jump on that or at least send an email, the better for you because then you'll close that deal a lot faster. So we're looking at that email going and being sent out right here in the campaign builder right from us saying, hey, thanks so much. You'll be in contact with Jeremy within the next 20 minutes or 24 hours. Hopefully it's the next five minutes because that's when they're really engaged. Um, and then once we have that done, usually within your campaign, we'll start to create what that sales rep will do, right? That workflow. Uh, usually you're going to have it to where a sales rep will fill out some sort of a script. So you can see right here in the campaign, we've created a goal 
that connects to a sequence and then to a subsequent goal. And we'll just rename this goal internal form. Usually sales teams have a, a sales script or they'll have a sales a sheet that they'll fill out. We can actually create that or recreate what you already have within Infusionsoft. The benefit of this is that we can automatically trigger things from your sales reps. So from that internal phone call or that internal form, whether they email in or whatever it might be, uh, this also can act as, let's say for example, someone foregoes going to online and just calls you right up. We wanna make sure that we can begin to fill out, in, fill out their information and begin to capture them right away so that way we can trigger the subsequent automation that we want. So from this internal form, I can actually have it to where it's gonna do things to my sales rep. So as you see right here, we can go through and usually in a sales process, once an internal form has been filled out, typically three things are gonna happen. Number one, a person is going to say, I love it, let's move forward, let's talk more, send me a quote. Whatever that might be, they're interested, they're interested now. We wanna move them forward. The next thing is gonna be if someone says, hey, I love your product, I need to get budget, uh, can you call me back in three months, right? We just started Q1, can you call me back in Q2? We wanna make sure that your sales reps also can have some sort of a long-term nurture phase. The benefit of this is as I click in here, I can actually set up a string of emails. And the benefit of that is that while I'm away as a sales rep, figuratively, I can begin to nurture them with educational material. Your prospects, the more they know about your product, the better it's gonna be when they come back and they're interested. Or they might even sparkle up a little more interest and the CEO might receive a email, which will then spark their interest and get them to call back faster. So as we see right here, having that automatically done for your sales reps will not only save them time, but it's also gonna increase the chances that those people bubble up on their own or increase the chances of closing when you guys begin the conversation again because they've been receiving information about your product or your service. And this works for any industry. I've done it for real estate agents. I've done it for financial services providers. I've done it for dog walking businesses. Every business can benefit from some sort of a long-term nurture. The last thing that's gonna happen is they call them and they can't get them on the phone. So nothing's more annoying than if I'm a sales rep and I leave a voicemail and I forget to call the guy back or I forget to write the note down or I put it on a sticky note and the cleaning crew throws it away. So we can actually have it to within the LVM sequence as I call it, it's going to remind me. I'm gonna probably send them an email saying, hey, tried to reach you and then remind me the next day, give them a call. So that way I don't have to remember that. That is a step one of our sales process. And typically that fits within 90, 95% of all business to business or business to consumer sales pipelines. The next step of that is, as we can see within Move Forward, depending on what your process is, whether that be sending an estimate, sending a quote, um, creating a proposal, whatever it might be, we can have it to where that sales rep is going to then get a task to do just that. And at this point, if you guys are using opportunities, we can have the opportunity automatically created. And this can be created at the beginning of the sequence, depending on whenever you create it. Typically, I like to do it once I've qualified them. Um, so as soon as I've created that opportunity, now we're in our regular sales pipeline. This comes down to staged events. So these stages are usually create a proposal or send an estimate or whatever it might be, and then leads up to a sale. Some businesses have 10 stages, some have two. Whatever you guys have, the campaign builder can be moldable enough to fit that. So as we see within stage one, I can create it to where as soon as that person moves into that stage, it creates a sequence that will then trigger off whatever my sales rep need. Usually I also like to couple that with a kind of an expectation or uh, sending an email that will be more about what's going to be happening in the process because as a prospect, whenever I buy things, I like to know kind of how I'm going to get there, how am I going to purchase. So usually in these kinds of stages, I like to just kind of preface saying, hey, this is our sales process, this is kind of what we're going to do, we're going to send you a proposal, uh, whether that proposal will be accepted or declined, we're going to kind of figure out how we can kind of work together on this. What this does is it actually creates a team atmosphere in the sale rather than a sales rep trying to sell a prospect. So we can set these expectations as well as, as you see right here, we can actually have timers. Let's say, let's say for example, we've sent an email out and Chris has got to create a, a task that then maybe he has to send a proposal. If that task does not get completed in a certain amount of time specified by a manager or a sales director, 
um, we can actually have it to where it might notify people. Benefit of this is that a lot of times we'll have sales reps that either forget, they go on vacation, and they come back and they've got tasks open, they don't know which ones are higher priority. We can actually prioritize and say these types of tasks, if this doesn't get done in three days, two days, right, when a proposal has been accepted, 20 minutes, right, we got to make sure we move that person forward. We're then creating it to where a manager will be notified when these things don't get done, or the sales rep. So that way there's no more cracks. There's nothing more frustrating than when we've got a person who either wants to purchase or wants to move forward with our service or ready for the next step and they aren't getting the communication or I'm not getting the communication as a sales rep that will allow me to move that person forward when they're ready. And if I'm a prospect, it's even more frustrating because I'm ready to go and the sales rep's kind of dropping the ball. And we go through this all the time, right, when we see a sales rep who's dropped the ball and it's not really their fault, they're dealing with hundreds or maybe even thousands of prospects. So what we're going to do within Infusionsoft is actually set it up to where there's no more cracks. I don't believe in cracks in a pipeline. So once we have our different stages here, as you can see, we can do stage one all the way up to three. I usually like to do three um, as a basis. Once we've created these different stages, that's our pipeline. That's all the automation we need. And as you see within the sequences, we can actually set it up to where it can be a series of emails or tasks. If you'd like to reassign it, let's say, for example, they close and I've got to reassign the, the uh, opportunity to implementation team, we can do all that on an automated basis so that way our prospects are getting the appropriate communications, our sales reps are also on the ball with the deal, and then we're making it to where if there's other departments that are involved, they're also involved within the sales process, so creating a real workflow for our sales reps. That is everything within the campaign builder. We're going to kind of go look forward at how we'd actually use that on a automated basis and how a sales rep would look at that. Right? This is all back end stuff. This is stuff that we would set up for one opportunity and if every opportunity that comes in after that or any other prospect, they would go through this funnel and we'd make it sure that it would be all automated for our sales reps. So that way it takes one, two clicks and we're done. Nothing is more frustrating as a sales rep is when I have to use a CRM, for those of you coming from a CRM. Uh, big CRM where I had to click all around and I had to find out prospects and opportunities all around my screen, make 20 clicks just to make one change. I'm going to show you how you can do it one, two clicks and have it to where it's done for your sales reps. So we're going to look back towards what we call our dashboard. So as you can see right here, the first thing that I'm going to see as a rep or a sales rep inside or outside or a manager, I want to see where my leads are at. That way I don't drop the ball on things or I don't have sales reps that are uh, having certain leads. Like let's say for example, I'm a sales rep right here and I'm in Qualify. I've got these leads and all this can be customized to whatever names you guys have. Uh, but if I got 630 people that maybe haven't been contacted, me as a manager, I'm going to look at that and go, we need to move those people down. So with the dashboard, as we can see, it's going to be more of a place that as a sales rep, I'm going to want to see things like where my leads are at. What my sales are at for the month, week, a year, and also what tasks I have. That's typically all I really care about as a sales rep. Sales managers, on the other hand, they want to see things like tasks, pipeline, results for certain campaigns they're running, whether that be from the trade show or whatever it might be, uh, custom statistics that they can pull in saying, okay, what's the team sales month to date or new prospects month to date, and then things like conversions. Right, we can see right here, these are sample reports that I've just pulled on here in the dashboard. Things like I want to see how many leads uh, Danny Business Owner has here that are in each stage and how many, what's his closing percentage to each of those stages. And then things like forecasting. This is really beneficial for managers as well as owners of the company. Being able to track uh, how many opportunities each person has and what's the potential revenues from those. So that way I can kind of gauge where my leads are at, how much they're worth to me, and when I close them I can then recognize that revenue. So the dashboard's really the first place of reference here. Uh, where a sales rep will pretty much stay most of their day is going to be actually right here in what we call my day. So from here in my day, I can see all of my tasks. As you see right here, we have this one that's overdue called call prospect. This could be from what we actually set up in that campaign earlier of when someone fills out the form online. Me, Kyle, I get a new task saying call this person. So when I say click on this task here, it's going to pull up the person. So it says right here, okay, needs to follow up about price, right? So I know what I have to do. I see Kelsey right here and I see any notes that I've applied to him in the past or I can see things like what tasks he might have that are pending that other people are working on in case there's multiple liaisons with that company. And then things like I want to see what emails he's open. So this is really cool as a rep. So when I'm here and I'm looking at Kelsey and I can see 
what emails he's opened or what actions he's taken with the communications I've sent him. It really helps me to maintain a, a smarter perspective as to what that prospect might need. They might have certain needs. I might be pitching product A, but based on what things he's opening and clicking on and looking at, I can actually see, okay, he's really interested in product B as well, but I haven't mentioned it. So I might mention to him and then bundle those two products or services together. So we'll be able to gauge that as well as things like our internal form that we created earlier. So right here from the internal form uh, section on that, I can actually go and fill out, I got Kyle's internal form here, fill out the form uh, that'll be like that script that we were talking about earlier. Things like their phone number, obviously company name, and then also the outcome, like appointment was scheduled, or I, I wanna put them in long-term nurture, I wanna put them in, or I left a voicemail, right? And when's their appointment day? Different things like that. You can create these forms, be very customizable. Uh, and then as, as a sales rep, all I gotta do is fill it out, like I normally would, press save, and it automatically would then trigger what we built in that campaign. Right? Earlier we had the move forward, long-term nurture, and left voicemail. So that triggers that for me off of one click. Right? Then I can have it to where any other subsequent tasks that get passed to me, I can see things like lead scoring. Right? This is really beneficial as a sales rep. I can say, hey, they fill out the web form, they get certain points, or they get certain tags, which is our system of categorization within Infusionsoft. Have it to where they get certain things, and then where I can see, okay, Kelsey's super hot right now because he's got five flames, right? He's done a lot of different things. He's got six points. That way, if I have certain tasks that get popped up, like this one has a critical um, task label, and he's got five flames, probably means he's ready to move forward. So me as a sales rep, I might spend more time with those higher priority clients than I would someone who's got one flame, two flames. So that's typically where you're going to be within your my day or how a sales rep would use um, Infusionsoft. Now we're going to take a look at opportunities. Uh, opportunities are really what it comes down to is a hierarchy of a sales team, usually having a company or account be the top level, uh, then a contact that's then associated to that company, and then opportunities that are associated to that contact or that company. Right? So if I'm dealing with Nike, for example, and Jared is in the marketing department working on a certain um, project, he'll be working with an opportunity there, but then I've got Kyle working on another opportunity. So these contacts or companies can have multiple opportunities at a time. And so the way we use opportunities, the reason why we do that is that way I don't have it to where this company has to be in one stage and then another stage and another stage, that they could have multiple opportunities open at once. And so I've actually pulled this up to where we can actually see uh, how we can search for those. So within this, as you see right here, we have the ability to search based on contact uh, fields opportunity fields, like if I want to make a search, everyone in my qualify stage that also you know, opened the, that email I sent three months ago or whatever it might be, we can create these custom fields as well so that way it can be very specific to your guys' specific needs. When I create those different searches, is what we call them, we can have them saved right here. So if I say, okay, I want to find all my new prospects month to date, I can click on that and boom, I've got 13 different people I can start working with. Typically, your sales reps aren't using more than 15 to 20 fields that they're filling out on these contacts. So we can actually have that all right here. And the benefit of that is that I can, as you see, one, two clicks, right? I click qualify and I want to change the stage. So that way, okay, I see these two tasks I have to do, move down to educate, press save. And remember, we actually set it up to where inside the campaign, when it moved to the second stage, it triggered automation. So that's actually how you see the automation of the flow of what a prospect would go through, right there in the opportunities. And then you also have that quick action bar like I showed you within my day to actually see you know, emails they've opened, if I wanna be looking at them here, forms that we can fill out, lead scoring, and everything right there on that prospect. We also can click right into the name. I'm gonna open up here a new tab. And within that, we're gonna be able to see all the different fields on that person. We can check out you know, all these different task items I have to do, change statuses, I can commit this to forecasts for my manager, say when it's gonna close, I can add custom fields in here. You have a lot of different variety of what you can do, and this is what a typical like CRM would look like with these tab view here. I can add products to it too. So when you import your products or services within Infusionsoft, you can add those to it. The benefit of that is that now I can have a valid forecast, right? I can actually see how much that, that particular deal is worth. Uh, when I zoom down here, I'm going to be able to see everything I've done with them, like notes, task, re recent activity they're going through. Right? If I want to add files to it, this is really cool for like sales, um, 
or for like real estate agents when they want to see, you know, the, a photo of the house or whatever it might be, I can put it right there and there inside that file box or a proposal that I've sent them. That's an opportunity, right? So as we see, as we move these opportunities through, then they'll just boom, pop right here in my sales pipeline stages right there on my dashboard, and we're good to go. The last thing is for a manager, right? If I'm a manager, how do I manage that? How do I create uh, reports on that? I actually got pulled up right here, CM reports. So if we go down to sales reports here, this is where really everything you pretty much need. Uh, as far as I wanna see what sales reps are converting, right? I wanna see uh, call history. So this is really cool for a sales manager when I wanna go find out, you know, if I've got who is creating more one hour appointments, right, between these certain dates. So if I say, okay, I wanna see who's done more one hour appointments in these dates with the criteria that they're, you know, on a certain team, whatever you might be, press search, and we see that Danny Business Owners made seven calls in this amount of time. So you'll be able to track how many people are doing certain things, so that way you see who's more productive, and based on that productivity, you might even attribute it to who's selling more. So that way you say, okay, we need to have a certain amount of calls equals one deal, or whatever it might be. So within that, you'll have all the sales reports that you need. You can actually pull those right there on your dashboard like I've pulled down here, like uh, custom statistics, conversions, and whatnot. Once you've created that for yourself on your dashboard, which by the way, the dashboard's all just a little cool drag and drop builder here. Each person gets their own dashboard. So a sales manager's dashboard is obviously going to be different than a sales rep's dashboard. They'll have more reports and be able to see the whole team. And you can even have different layers of that. There might be multiple sales managers that are managing teams. So if we want to have a hierarchy within Infusionsoft, you can create that to where now you have a complete sales pipeline. That is everything on the sales pipeline. So if you find yourself feeling you have lots of cracks in your sales pipeline, no automation or a cumbersome CRM, please call your sales rep within Infusionsoft and we'll make sure that we can show you a little bit more of this, get you going.